thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Maggie, and thanks everybody for joining us today. Welcome. I'm Nick Allen. I'm the Northeast Regional Coordinator for Clean Energy Resource Teams. I'm really glad you could all join us today. I want to start out by saying that this is a very intro introductory session on community engagement. So I know that many of you attending today will have deeper knowledge, experience, and wisdom around community engagement, but this series is being created in a way that anyone who wishes to become a clean energy ambassador can jump right in regardless of experience level. So we will have some time for questions and sharing at the end of this brief overview on community engagement. So um, let's define community engagement. Uh, basically, it seeks to better engage community to achieve long-term sustainable outcomes, processes, relationships, discourse, decision-making, and implementation. Um, put a different way, community engagement seeks out and facilitates the involvement of those potentially affected by or interested in a decision. And um, we should probably define community, right? So community is a broad term. We use it to define groups of people. A community might be a geographic location, a community of place. So your neighborhood, your county, your state, a community of similar interest, which is like a community of practice. So that might be a group of researchers, um, a group of doctors, a union, things of that nature. You might also have communities of affiliation or identity such as industries or religion. Well, we'll move on to the three C's of community engagement. Um, that's communi communication, collaboration, and connection. So communication is easy, right? We're doing it right now. Uh, maybe not that well, but we're doing it. Uh, communi uh, email, newsletters, texts, calls, some people still make phone calls. I know it's surprising, but we do. Um, events, calendars, Zoom, websites are a means of communication. So um, that's a big part of engaging community is your communication plan. The next is collaboration. So we're sharing decision-making. We're distributing the tasks. Um, if I, as an organizer, have decided that I'm engaging a community, I can't do all the tasks myself because we're not collaborating then, right? Like I've just taken over and that's not, that's not community oriented. Um, surveying, getting people's needs assessed, storytelling, um, telling how they're, how they're already doing the things and the things that they want to do and their vision. Um, and integration. So that work is really done together and not, not centered on just one person, one organization. Um, and the last one here is connection. Uh, that's mediums to foster relationship building. Authentic relationships are key to building community. If it cannot be transactional, you can't just talk to people and say, you know, I want to do this thing and I need to know what you think about it. Okay. And then forget about them. We have to build a solid, real relationship. It's a working relationship. We've got healthy boundaries, but we've really fostered a connection with folks so that that moves forward um, in the work that we're doing. Um, and then membership re recognition is a really important part of building connection. So when your members and the people who've joined you have done something, you celebrate them. That can be as small as um, noting them in your annual newsletter. These are the folks who did some great things for us. Here are their names. We love you, thanks for doing that for us. Um, but it could be bigger. You could have an award ceremony, lots of people do. Um, there are all ways to recognize members sending small gifts, um, just a card in the mail brightens people's days. So you wanna recognize your membership. Let's talk about the five pillars of community engagement. The first of which is to know your audience. So who within the community do we want to engage and why? You wanna come up with this plan before you start approaching people. <laughs> so you wanna know who it is you're going to chat with, what is it we're bringing to them? What are we asking for? All of those things are really important. Who makes up that community? Um, what are the characteristics that that community shares? What makes them a community? And what is the history of that community? That's really important, um, especially recognizing that often we are outsiders to that community when we're trying to engage with them. So we want to recognize if there are historical differences, if there are former challenges, if there's a history of you know, distrust, all of those things need to be taken into account while you're planning. 
And number two is uh, really stresses that why before what. People need to understand why a project is happening and how it will impact them before they can really provide good feedback or be excited about it. Um, we have, what is that acronym with them? What's in it for me? Uh, humans are just that way. We aren't, aren't super engaged or excited about things unless we know what it does for us. When we're talking about clean energy, sometimes that idea is a little ephemeral. People don't always understand what that clean energy is going to do for their community. So bringing that information to them is super important. Why do you need or want people to get involved in your project? What are you trying to achieve by getting them involved? So are you just looking for people to sign a petition, but are you hoping that they'll they'll actually invest and be involved in? You wanna make these plans before you march into a community. Um, and this number three, build trust, really speaks to that authentic relationships. Part that I mentioned earlier, you want to be forging meaningful relationships with community. Um, we partner with leaders and organizations that community members know and trust to facilitate information and sharing and providing those insights and feedback. Um, that means that we, we assert, um, try to bring forth information that has been researched, has uh, already been trusted and tried and, and all of those things. Um, Many communities have experiences that lead them to believe that promises won't be met um, or that they won't actually be heard when they're coming to those sessions. So that's why you want it to be meaningful. When people are giving you feedback, you want to do best efforts to give them <laughs> what they're asking for, um, or at very least explain to them why something might not be feasible. Um, step four is to look for the gaps. So what haven't we heard? Who haven't we heard from? What misconceptions or misinformation are we hearing? We look at this a lot when we are thinking about electric vehicles. There are a lot of misconceptions and misinformation, particularly as you get out into rural Minnesota where there aren't as many of them. People don't have experiences with them. They haven't been in an Uber, that's a Tesla. <laughs> so there's a lot of misinformation um, and just some you know, trepidation around that. So bringing them good information, um, helping sort of spread the word is a huge part of this kind of engagement and you're going to be flexible. So flexibility here is key. If something isn't working, we reevaluate our plan and messaging and make space for our communities. In other words, we pivot and you see the friends here fighting with a couch. <laughs> and finally, you want to continue a two-way dialogue. Community engagement is only successful only successful if both parties are communicating to each other and you both show that you're listening. So um, we, we can be tempted to just go into a community, preach at them and leave. <laughs> and that, that doesn't feel, I mean, it might feel good. Like we talked to them. We, we, we brought the good word of clean energy to everybody, but was that meaningful? Is it a dialogue? Did you hear what they're thinking about their energy goals? Um, and what are you doing moving forward? Like, are you just blasting them with email or do you still call and contact them? Do you have a back and forth with these folks over a long term? So again, this is set up for chat. So I'm not 100% sure how we do it, um, but it is essentially, let's see what, I think the next slide is just questions. So maybe we can open it up. I don't know if people are going to be able to talk because it is set to webinar, they will be able to talk. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> so we um, can, um, sorry to interrupt Nick. I yes, am going to yes. go ahead and Shailen already did it because she's great. So in the little chat, um, we can all answer this question and, and in chat or fall form, do you want to, uh, we'll give people a second to type their answer in here and then we'll wait for you, Nick, to tell us when we should, um, I think people can just jump in. Um, there's, I don't know how many, well, we've got 25 people, so that's a big group. But um, yeah, if you just have a vision of what you think successful community engagement looks like to you, if you were to succeed with your goal, um, what does that look like? Uh, just give us a few words, a sentence, and pop those in chat. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it a bit. And our next section is just for questions, so um, we'll have time to chat. So, so go ahead and jump in.
one person volunteered that to success to them looks like collaboration between groups of people, relationship building. That's wonderful. Thank you for jumping in with that. For accessibility, I'll go ahead if it's okay and read some of the things I'm seeing in the chat. Someone else said community engagement looks like participation, community led outcomes. Absolutely. Community members excited for clean energy projects. Yes, I love that. Clarifying misconceptions or misinformation. When participants see themselves in the solutions, open dialogue, sharing of information, acting on information. This is great. I think you um, you all are on the right track. Um, I see the ability to engage different parties involved and in getting them to discuss challenges um, and, and opportunities. I think that's, um, yeah, these are wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, well, thank you again. So thanks so much for participating. Thanks for all your questions. And um, you have my contact information on the bottom there. You can find contact information for everybody, including people right in your region. Um, there is a coordinator in all regions of Minnesota. So there are specific people. But if you contact me and you're not in the right region, I will just uh, point you in the right direction. So it's OK if you just shoot me an email. Um, thanks so much for joining us today, and I hope to see all of you at next week's session. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.